Welcome everybody to yet another in our series of Meet the Arranger and I have the great pleasure of being with Jake Alexander. Hello Jake. Hiya. We're really pleased to have you on board and um, welcome. Uh, whereabouts do you live? In uh, London, in the borough of Lewisham. Right, gosh. So a busy metropolis. Do you have enough enough to keep you going there? Do you get about? easily. I hear I'm you're a cyclist, is that yeah, right? I'm a cyclist, yeah, like yourself, Craig, yeah. Um, yeah, no, yeah that, and that is how, mainly how I get around, yeah, from one choir to another on my little fold-up bike. Pleasant. Do you sometimes sing when you're, I mean, the rhythm of the cycling can be sometimes quite rhythmic. Do you get songs in your head that go with the pedalling stroke or do you write songs on the bike? Oh, I, I, yeah, I do sing songs sometimes. Yeah, I just, I tend, I tend to have, to have, um, again, probably shouldn't reveal this to you know it's not not really the done thing but I do have music playing in my ears um so I, I'll, oh, I'll yeah. sing along I'll sing along <laughs> only one ear I hope one ear one one in one on yes of course exactly yeah. exactly now, I sometimes you know um uh compose things on the bike I have to stop the bike and sort of put it into a phone and <laughs> right it's a good time to sort of think and be be with yourself yeah yeah that's true that's very okay. true anyway look welcome to choir community it's fantastic to have you on board we love your songs and your rounds and your arrangements and you you know clearly um skilled in arranging and directing but that's got to come from somewhere hasn't it so can i take you way back take you way back to your earliest memory of music as a thing okay so, well my my dad what? um my dad was a pianist he is a pianist uh you're very good uh sight reader and he decided that he was going to teach me the Sopranino recorder at the age of five. Uh, I don't think that went very well, but I do have uh, early memory. That's one of my earliest memories is of, you know, struggling to cover those holes. Okay. Um, and um, and a about a year later, I start, he started teaching me the piano as well. The classical? Uh, or pop or jazz or whatever? Yeah, classical. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so growing up even younger than that you, you you piano music was in the you heard him play that was probably a, an early memory uh yeah yeah true yeah yeah Is there anything he played particularly that you remember one particular tune that you liked from when you were young i'm not i'm not really sure no i, I no I, I can't think of one particular tune but um but he, you know he certainly encouraged me to be you know creative at the piano um, I actually wrote my first composition at the age of about six or seven. Right. Do you know what, remember what it was? It was in G major, uh, three, four time signature, had a sort of um, cha, cha feel. Um, but I don't know where the score is, so uh, oh. I wouldn't be able to play it to you, unfortunately. That would work <laughs> a lot one day. Uh, if, if I ever uh, uncover it, I'll, I'll send it to, send it to peers for you guys to. Yeah. Well, so put some words to it, maybe about. Yeah. cycling around London. <laughs> yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's great. Um, okay, so early years, dad taught you the piano recorder. Was there somebody at school? Was there a primary school teacher? What What was music like at primary school? Was there just singing in assembly? Or was it a bit more than that? Well, there was a lot of singing in assembly. Yeah, I mean, there were, um, I went to quite, um, it was quite, a, quite it wasn't a faith school but it was quite religious actually then the, the assemblies were quite religious so we sang a lot of hymns um there were i mean there were so there have been so many amazing teachers actually in my life in primary school um there was there was mrs o'shea who would uh tolerate and encourage me and my friend to uh, come and play piano in her class after school um which you know it doesn't sound like very much but you know sometimes that space and opportunity that's all you that's all you really need um as a kid um and then going into um going into secondary school um that, that i had a i had a again a lovely a lovely music teacher called chris evans and um and he'll always have a special place in my heart just for leaving the music block unlocked or or giving us the keys to the music block and trusting us with it um and and again just giving us the space to you know just mess around and uh and you know, get away from all the other kids. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested in the the songs and the things and the music that kind of switches you on. So, 
just to, back to the primary school again, was there a particular song that she taught you or an assembly song that sort of made an impression on you? I think you remember, remember thinking that and why? Was there a song you particularly liked? And um, <laughs> it was well, we occasionally there were there would be a non religious one thrown in there. I remember one about uh, I, I remember one about the next. It was called the Next Generation. I think it was. I think it was called, and it was an it was an environmental song because back back in those days it was all about the hole in the ozone layer. Um, and this song, you know, it talked about that and it talked about oil slicks. That was a big thing back then. And obviously I was growing up in Cornwall. That was, a, that was an even bigger thing. Um, and, um, and, you know, I, I suppose on some level that might have shaped my, my kind of, uh, um, my, you know, later might have been, a, uh, kind of, uh, subconscious influence on, on my later writing i like to write stuff that has kind of some kind of um socially conscious message that sounds yes oh that inspired you excellent um did you have any way of listening to music when you were little um uh, my, my my i got given a cassette recorder when i was or, you know back in the back in the day they had these little cassette recorders do you have a radio or a cassette or something that where you could hear the music that was out there you know there was a record player in the house did you what was your first record this is, well my, my dad would would always have radio three on right like, like, like constantly all day, you know all day it would just be playing in the kitchen wow. you know he'd be in and out and um um so there was that um what was i into uh i had a little i had a little yellow uh walkman with uh okay. with big big uh rubber buttons on the top and you know used to play my my nursery rhymes Puff okay. Magic Dragon, stuff like that. <laughs> After that, so what, what was your first entry into pop music? Did you, did you, were you able to buy records with your, I'm, I'm hoping vinyl was still there, um, with your pocket money? Right, well, yeah, so, so I, I think me getting, really getting into music, uh, y you know, my own kind of music, that was really the spur for me becoming obsessed with you know playing and stuff like that and that was when i was about 13 or 14. okay um and i um you know i've i've i i think one of the moments looking back the the, the one the one kind of uh moment when i realized the power of of music um so it was it was in about 97 i guess and the you know the movie titanic had just come out okay and um and I could, you know, I could obviously like play the piano um, a little bit by that stage. Um, and um, and I played My Heart Will Go On, you know, just messing around in the in the music room one day. And, you know, all the, all the girls in the class were coming around the piano, you know, and I finished the performance and like and like there were a couple of them like in tears, you know, and um, and it was it was, wow, it was just this is amazing you know like obviously like finished i finished you know five minutes later they've gone back to ignoring me again but <laughs> that that that's that's what sticks in the mind so um it's and and it was around that time that i that i really uh that i really got into playing with my friends i was in a band we we used to do a lot of songs by crowded house very tasteful uh, yeah thank you yeah um, one day <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> that, I think that might have been. Uh, did you say four seasons in one day? Yeah, lovely song. Yeah. That was. That, I think that was probably the first song that we ever did. Okay. Actually, in the band, four seasons in one day. Yeah, um, but, but there was there was a time. I think for the first year, we literally only played crowded house songs. You know, um, but we started to write songs as well. Um, you know, my friend. It was most of my friends writing the words, and me writing uh, me writing the music. Um, and and were there opportunities to go stratospheric, you know? Were there opportunities to gig at school. I remember I was I remember being in a band which we did one one gig uh, with sort of like a five other bands and we organised this this thing and it was you know embarrass, embarrassing. But did did you do a, did you do gigs at school? Yeah, I mean we 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 played in school assemblies stuff like that. Um, some went better than others. Um, <laughs> you know, um, assembly, goodness. <laughs> I know that's scary, right? Well, it's a good that's school. That show, you know, it's good, good forward thinking, modern school. <laughs> that didn't happen in my day. 
<laughs> yeah, well, you know, I think they were just kind of quite, quite, quite kind of hands off. The, the the school didn't, the school I went to, like I said, a wonderful music teacher and everything, but I think the school as a whole didn't really value music. Um, okay. It had this whole um, approach it, 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 of, of like a technology, uh, like like uh, maths, that, 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 that kind of thing. It was uh, even there was a drive to call itself i think it was a technology college one day and the and meanwhile the music um the music block was was quite sad looking really just okay. a couple of little but despite really, that but you ended up doing music so where was the the catalyst was there some other catalyst at school that sort of pushed you further and and when did you start thinking hey i could do this more i'm going to keep doing music yeah. yeah it was it was just doing it with my mates really yeah uh, with some really good friends um and we just, you know, we just became, you know, those weird kids that just hang around the music block. Um, <laughs> the, was there any chance of of choral music or any sort of singing together? You know, the harmony is what what turns us on now. Was there anything, anything? Like, was there a house music competition or some sort of? Well, well, no, but um, no, nothing, no, nothing like that. I don't think we didn't even have houses actually. Oh gosh. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you wouldn't know. It's not, not every school does, does it really? No, <laughs> no, but we, um, as you know, Crowded House um, has a lot of vocal harmonies. So we put, yeah. we tried to put that into, into our, you know, you know, into our, our incorporate that into our band. Yes. Um, and it's mostly, obviously, you know, me playing the piano um, and the cello as well by that time. And, and I played the saxophone as well at school. Very uh, versatile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I so I kind of took the lead on the on the kind of arranging front, and I suppose that was the first time that I really started uh, working with voices and you know discovering my love for that. Do you remember the first song you arranged that you came to the band? That, hey guys, look what I've done! I've done this. Yeah, I mean, I mean, or did this happen gradually? It's yeah, it's difficult to say because of course that first song that we did, Four Seasons in One Day, yeah. would have been me sort of saying. Okay, it's this chord and this chord and this chord. You've got to play that, yeah. that, that, and then you know, it's kind of an arrangement. Nothing's written down, though, you know. So, yeah, that, that would have been the first time, I suppose, to some to some extent. Okay, so we got to secondary school. Some really inspirational, inspirational teachers and some great friends who you mucked about with music. It sounds it sounds idyllic. What happened after that? Um, how did you then get into further music? Um, well, I, I really started getting into uh, music technology. Um, again, I, ha I had a, a great um, teacher and, and mentor. He, he sadly died a few years ago, but he's named Al Ryder, who was a big personality on the, uh, on the Cornish music scene. Um, and he used to go around the county with this Akai multi-track recorder um helping young rock bands to record their first songs you know it was, it was completely outside the system you know he he just kind of do it as a as a kind of free service to complement his guitar teaching um and then later on he became a music technology uh lecturer at sixth form college which is where i went to study um and 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 so when i was at sixth form college i i did other a levels as well but the only ones i was really interested in were music and music technology okay. um and then from there, <clears throat> I um, I applied to Trinity Trinity College of Music, yeah. um, which is in Greenwich, very close to where I where I live now, um, and I went up there to study composition. Right. So the composing became your main musical thread, as it were, and was it doing the technology with uh, with him that helped you these recordings and that uh, the stuff at college that you did? Did that did that push you on to the your identity as a composer. Yeah, most definitely. And and that that interest in, in technology, that still kind of, that still serves me well, actually. Um, I, I always feel like, you know, compared to a lot of the people that I, uh, you, you know, a lot of my, my peers, I'm, I'm, you know, just slightly ahead of the game on that still. Um, it's, it's, it's been, you know, it's been a real asset during my career and, and even to the point where, um, um, you know, at the beginning of this lockdown, um, you know, my my knowledge of um, the loop pedal became very, very yeah. beneficial to uh, to being able to continue rehearsals. Cool. So, you know, I'm I'm you know I'm very grateful for that sort of introduction into into music tech. So, did you use to use the technology um, for 
making the compositions or were you were you writing for ensembles i mean did you used to do it yourself and program up and that sort of thing were you using a program like cake walk or yeah i was using cube, cube or, or initially or it was it, i had one uh, i have one called cubasis which okay. was the only one light enough to run on my on my mother's um work computer <laughs> so um so that that was the first uh, daw um with um outboard midi instruments yeah i had a, had a, a keyboard yeah with with one of those proper old midi cables that you never see anymore the yeah. five pin din yeah 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 <laughs> been there <laughs> Excellent. So, and all oh, right, give name me a really successful composition that you did at Trinity that you were very pleased with that, that went well. Ah, oh, really God. spurred you on to greater things. Um, well, I, I wrote one. I I had I had a, a Finnish girlfriend at the time, and I wrote a song in Finnish using um using uh some, some you know some Finnish text from from the Kalevala, which is like their national epic in Finland, and uh, and that was for four voices. That that was that was long. That was that was about ten minutes long. Um, yeah, so that um that that was that was something I was very pleased with. Um, and I also when I was at me and when I was at music college, I I I, I suppose one of the things that became very useful later on is that every time you do a new composition you'd have to um get people to get people to perform it and being at music college there's, pl there's plenty of people that you can call upon uh but you you know some composers get other people to direct the ensemble but for me i um i always tried to direct it myself and conduct it myself um so that really stood me in good stead for later. And actually, when I was at, at music college, as as I progressed, I was finding I was writing more and more for voices, and it, it just became apparent this is you know this is what I like the most. I like I like working with words, mm. you know. I um, yeah, almost to the point where I can't understand why why you wouldn't choose to have words in a piece of music. You know, words and music go so well together. Like, why would you make that choice not not to include them? You know, um, <laughs> that's just that's just me. Though. That's not that's not. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, disparagement. Interesting non. <laughs> instrument and so there were obviously good enough lots of singers at Trinity that they they were there singing your stuff. Was there a moment where you thought, I, "This is really now a choir. I've got a choir." How? Where did the choir thing start? Um. Well. There were a couple of pieces that I did where I had what you might what you might be able to call a choir. There were about eight singers on stage yeah. um, singing four parts. Um, of course, the more people you get involved, the more people you have to organise. <laughs> so, so it would be a, it, it's a small choir, but but yeah, that 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 was about the extent of it. They made a nice sound together. Yeah, exactly. No, they certainly did. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and was this what sort of style do you think you were writing at this time? With your well, you, uh, can you can you define it somehow? Yeah, it was it was quite experimental. You know, at, at Trinity, there was there was pressure to 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 try and be different in some way, um, yeah. and 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 i understand that you know if you're not going to take risks at, at music college you know why well you know when when are you, when are you going to <laughs> um so um so, so that and but that see, see when when you push people like myself the students to go outside their comfort zones weird things can happen right and and so i was writing stuff that was quite experimental quite strange sounding sometimes perhaps a little bit ugly um did you go into music, music theater at all with some sort of spacing and um presentation i mean i once saw a, a piece called michelangelo where michelangelo was naked in a cage suspended above yeah. a you know a stage with and it was a piece of music it wasn't they called it music theater it was a bit uh, no i asked if i could have a naked performer on one occasion but um but but no <laughs> i wasn't allowed <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's got to be a there's a boundary somewhere, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, I suppose. And so, what would it sound like? I mean, just just give us a sort of what were, were you were you influenced by, you know, uh, Britain or more modern 
more modern um, uh, sounding music than um, that? Yeah, more like, um, you know, like John Cage, maybe. Okay. Um, or, you know, going back, um, you know, serialist composers like Webern. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Or um, and 12 note, 12 tone row stuff going on with, you know, people picking out the different uh, semitones and everything. Yeah, I, I well, I wouldn't use the 12 tone row, but I would do stuff like, um, I would, I would use like, maybe three notes yeah three note row or something like that yeah. um it's like something slightly more minimalist but still using quite mathematical principles um but um i mean it's it's, it's very different to the kind of to the kind of stuff i've written uh, uh since since leaving so since the, the the maths of music interests you in, in, in some way or other oh ma you know mathematics is uh, i love mathematics yeah yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I, I really love the sort of the way that chords and relationships between keys are, are p perfectly balanced and all that, all that. Business. Yeah, yeah. No, I can, I can, I can, I can imagine that from from uh, listening to your rounds actually, and and actually writing around you, you because you write. I, we both write a lot of rounds, don't we? And yes. um, and that that is quite that is quite a mathematical process. I think it's almost like filling in a Sudoku puzzle I, I love the way you approach rounds and i, and I you know um uh, uh give us a can you say in any way define how your approach to that now how do um, you start do you what do you start with the chord progression or the melody or do you i mean you love the words do the words immediately suggest a tune to you or do you have to work at it um yeah sometimes but um i think i i take the approach that i that, that i take whenever i whenever i write a piece of music which is that i i, I don't feel confident to be able confident enough to be able to um do everything all at once so if you break it down into its elements it's much easier so for example i will do the rhythm completely completely you know um the entire rhythm before i set a note wow um and then then I'll work out for a round uh, how I can break it down so that it, you know, fit the parts fit nicely on top of each other. So uh, say it has nine bars, that's obvious. You will do three, three, three. Um, if it has eight, you'll probably do two, 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 two. Yes. Um, so in four parts. If it has seven, you're kind of screwed <laughs> you, you need, you <laughs> need to extend you, something somewhere yeah you'll, you'll have to yes and there are different ways around that exactly yeah I love that, how you set the martin luther king words only when it's dark enough and you say the word you only four times before the rest of it <laughs> only, right. only, only only when it's dark enough dark enough and the, it's the repetition of that that i think is is it really 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 works if i if anyone's watching this i would recommend you go to um uh, Jake's page on the website and check out the rounds because we've got some rounds of his just coming up and they're wonderful they're beautiful um so the choir the community choir thing Jake and so how many choirs do you run or have you run is it is it um is this something that you do regularly yeah so I started my first choir in 2017 okay. um that was uh, again relatively again, sorry relatively recent compared to a lot of our other that's true yeah yeah for a long time before that i was um i was working as a dance accompanist i played the cello okay. and i and i was working w again with my loop machine in the studio playing for technique classes getting up like super early in the morning because dance that's when dancers start work and um um and i did i did that for some time but like as with anything you know it, it's a it's great work for a musician because you can do what whatever you want you know in the, in those classes as long as you keep the beat going but it did get a bit samey after a while inevitably um and um uh and i at the same time i've been playing with my folk band for years um which is called the sea kings and the sea kings is a, a very kind of vocally orientated ensemble i would arrange everything for, for oh, the sea kings and um and um, again, nothing like nothing like the work I did at music college, but the harmonies 
the harmonies were quite extreme. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't try and do any of that kind of stuff with my choirs, put it that way. Um, but then, um, so I so I I quit the dance accompaniment. I the work with the Sea Kings was kind of winding down because people were moving out of London and stuff like that. Um, and in so in 2017, I started Quaggy Community Choir, which is uh, based in Lewisham, just up the road from me um with a friend open your idea or were you invited how, how did that come about uh, yeah it's just again with a very good friend um there's a there's a theme there's a theme here isn't there <laughs> with me um i'm realizing um it, called uh called priya bows and um uh and we you know we just we just got together and and and, and thought yeah this would be really really good fun you know and she does all the um like the management of the choir okay um like she, up to her to, how did you find the people to join the choir was there an advert that went up somewhere or um there was, how did you advertise it there was some yeah there was some leafleting at the time <laughs> and yeah there was some there was some um ads on facebook probably um there was mostly actually it was probably just um friends of friends yeah the uh the first rehearsal um and um yeah, and it's just sort of grown, grown from there, really. Um, there's so many choirs in Lewisham um, that it, it can be quite difficult to, to, you know, to attract people to your own choir. Um, but we've got about 40, we've got about 40 people right now come, come to our rehearsals. Well, no, well, now we haven't because we're, we're on Zoom. <laughs> we've, got, we've got a bit less than that, but... That yeah, was on a, one of my yeah. next questions, yes. How, how, you know, how have you coped with, the, with all the choirs? Is the Quaggy Choir the, the only choir you, you direct? No, I've got um, I've got a workplace choir. Um, that's in the Old Royal Naval College in Greenwich, near, very close to where I went to music college. Um, yes. The trust that looks after those big um, those big buildings there. Um, and I've got a political protest choir that's up in North London. Um, we go out, go out on a lot of demos and stuff like that. That's really yes. good fun. To go on all the marches and uh, sing and uh, sing as you go. We we do, but mostly it's no, that that that's that's hard. We have done that, but um, mostly it's singing by the side of a march as the march goes past, right. and then we we'll join the march at the end. But we won't. I mean, some people will sing, but that that's kind of more informal. <laughs> the singing while marching. Yes. Well, I hope you get yes harder these days with the COVID and all that. But I'm I'm sure you'll get you'll be able to get back to that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. When it happens. Okay, can, and this is interesting. Can you name me one thing you've protested against in song, and how did you do it? This is a fascinating. Um, the, the, I think the most memorable demo I've been on with them was uh, against the um, arms fair at the Excel Centre in London. Uh, it happens every two years. Right. Uh, and I don't, I haven't been in with the choir very long, so I've only, I've only, uh, I've only done one with them. Um, so yeah, singing, singing there, that there was quite a lot of aggro at that one, as you might imagine. It's, oh. it's, cause it's at the Excel center. It's not, um, it's not in a big center of population or anything like that. It's quite out of the way. You're kind of in, in quite a marginal area. Yes. Um, and, and there's, and there's some, the people, the people, basically the people that come are people that uh, know why they want to be there, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, and of, and often you know a lot of them aren't afraid to um, get arrested or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so we're you know we're singing and there's and there's all this there's there's quite a lot of argy bargy yeah. going along going on behind me. But you know I I, I try and I try and just stay stay in my in my bubble. <laughs> ask, what what did you sing? Um, it, it, we have we have like set various set lists depending on the demo um i'm just trying to think now i mean there's there's with that group does so many songs there's probably about uh, you know in in three years with them i've probably done about 200 songs something like that yeah. um because they, they tend to be quite quite simple because obviously people yes. will join in at demos they need to be simple enough so that people can do that and also so that um a lot there's a, like i said there's a you know if 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 there's a fight going on over <laughs> you know people need to be able to um to, to to be able to sing the song well with, with you know without being distracted by that um so it needs to be simple um 
yeah, I, I just, I, just gone out of my head for the actual the actual set set list that we did that day. But I'm sure um, people but there would find, have been very if they're, if they're interested, they, they'll find you. Are you on YouTube somewhere? And uh, is there are there is there footage? <laughs> um that yeah there may there, there, there will definitely be footage at, at, at some demos of, of us yeah yeah oh masters of war we, we might have done masters of war that's in our that's in our repertoire you know okay. bob dylan song do you think oh i'm thinking you know in the in the future we could get it onto the choir community page maybe as a, yeah we can we, we can do yeah that's that's one of my arrangements so yeah i'd be happy yeah. to happy to oh, lovely we're nearly there um okay and Okay, great. Can I ask you um, what you are arranging at the moment? Is there anything on the on the drawing board on the wherever? Well, actually, do you know how do you compose? Do you do it at the desk or do you do it at the pan piano? Some people sit at the piano and arrange. Or it just... Yeah, no, I, I do it. I do it at the piano mostly. Yeah, I have a little okay. have a little pad. Yeah, scribble it down there. Um, so is it something that's that's on on the way. Yeah. So um, a book. There's a book that came out recently, an anthology of poetry called These Are The Hands, and uh, and it was written by uh, various doctors and nurses in the NHS um, and, um, and, and, other, and other staff as well, for that matter. And uh, I think Michael Rosen might have had a hand in putting the whole thing together as well. That these are the hands. That was that was his poem. It features at the start of the book. Anyway, I've got some um, I've got permission to use some of these uh, poems in my in my work. So I'm writing some rounds based on a few fragments of poetry oh, uh, written wow. by these uh, written by these NHS workers. That sounds very current and very beautiful an idea yeah. as well. And much needed at this time, I'm sure. Yes, I think so. Yeah. 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 And have you managed online for the last year, year, almost a year and a half now, isn't it? Have you done some Zoom choirs and sent videos out to people have if you kept people together yeah so i've i've quite enjoyed uh actually um the the challenge of, of trying to keep my choirs going over zoom uh it was a very difficult first month or two at the beginning of the lockdown um you know as I, as, as we you know i think everyone's found it quite difficult but just you know just struggling to keep up with the the the, the change um but yeah, I've kind of found a way of making it work, you know, after a fashion, using my loop machine. Oh, yeah. um, actually, all the looping is done in the in the computer now. So there's a, my computer has a, has a massive workload every, uh, every every choir evening, you know, with the looping going on, the Zoom going on, everything like that. Um, but, um, but I'm, you know, obviously, like everyone, I'm really looking forward to getting back to singing are again you, are you planning reminded. it are you, are you beginning to plan presuming june the 21st we're allowed to sing indoors again yeah uh yeah if that is if if that is the day yeah i to be honest i'm not sure whether i'm not sure whether we will plan to come back then i think we might wait until it's absolutely clear that we are allowed because we've had so many false starts actually um so uh, you know the government has changed the advice for choirs multiple on multiple occasions haven't they at the very last minute most notably with regards to the uh, latest rule about not singing indoors um so so that you know we yeah i, I just i just don't want to go through the whole get people's hopes process. up no no exactly so i think we'll wait until it's obvious we might not start again until september okay well we're allowed to be outdoors at the moment and it is summer so is there is there a venue you 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 might um just get a get a get a session out yeah so we we are actually we are going to do an outside session on on june the 21st yeah but oh. that it's that's going to be a workshop with um lots of other choirs i'm i'm not sure to be honest who's going to turn up it's going to be really interesting because our um the makeup of our of quaggy community choir um is um it, it is very different now to how it was a year yeah. ago um so we, I suspect that a lot of those people that don't join us on Zoom, I suspect they will come back, but uh, I don't know how many. And also, I don't know whether the people who have joined us on Zoom um, will actually join us in real life. So that 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 should be very interesting to find out. It would be uh, it would be really nice if we could if I could actually. Well, meet them. Miss Arthur, they don't, I'm sure. 
Um, and, where, and where is, am I allowed to ask where that is? What venue are you choose? Yeah, yeah, that's in, that's in Deptford. Um, it's at the Albany in Deptford. Um, and it, yeah, it's, it's Make Music Day actually that day, isn't it? Um, it June is, from, yes. So it's, it's part of the, those celebrations. I think we're going to do Weller Man, um, which are... Uh, a popular choice these days. Yes, I think it will be, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Jake, it's been fantastic meeting you, um, hearing more about your musical influences and your life. And we are so delighted that you're part of choir community. And we look forward to all your amazing arrangements and, and choral directing uh, coming up. Thanks, Craig. I'm really excited about working with you guys as well. Thanks, Jake. Take care. Bye. Bye.